fairness and information retrieval, in particular, how can we push the boundaries of fairness, yes, how can we detect boundaries of fairness, and how fair or how relevant can we achieve given Thank some you. particular data set? So I'm going to start with modeling examples and then followed by the um, problem definition and then I'll go, I'm going to describe our framework and uh, a brief uh, summary. So um, first of all, how many of you have drunk the coffee today? Okay, are you aware of the benefits and harms associated with coffee on health? Um, so in such cases, when we have some questions in mind, we may just go directly to the search engine and type in some query and search online. So here's an example where I type in the uh, query coffee house in Google search. And as, as you can see, the first result uh, is the enhanced snippet by, provided by Google, which is talking about all kinds of benefits associated with coffee. So in fact, if you look at uh, the first four results on the first page, you can see they're all talking about the benefits of coffee. So imagine, if this is in the daily uh, use, uh, how many times are you going to go to the second page to check out the results? Are you going to simply stop at the first page? And what is your impression uh, regarding this query or topic? So if you, go to, if you look at the second page, uh, and this is ranked at the 18th to the 20th results, and you can see there are actually some harms and risks associated with copy on health. So this is apparently, um, there's some biased presentation of the uh, resources or the results um, provided by the search engine. So um, another example is in the image search, where we're typing in the query CEO, we see the top results are all male CEOs, which is biased against the female CEOs. And another example is in query suggestion, when we type in why are black women so, we get a list of negative words, but we're not getting the suggestions if we're typing why are black women so, uh, or why are white women so. So this is apparently some racial bias associated with a search system. Um, so the search, system, uh, so search system should account for fairness. Well, it has to maintain some relevance. But are we able to achieve um, the fairness without sacrificing the relevance? Um, uh, is it dependent on the data? Is it dependent on the algorithm? And how do we estimate such trade-offs? So this is not only happening in search engines or search systems, it actually happens in two-sided market platforms as well. For example, like Spotify, uh, like Amazon, who is providing service to the users, where the content provider should make the consumer satisfied by providing relevant content. Well, it also has to consider the fairness of the uh, content suppliers. For example, if we're trying to optimize for the consumer satisfaction, we may be always recommending the most popular content from the most popular artists. But this is apparently unfair for the emerging artists who um, has less opportunity to be exposed to the unpopularity. So, but if we're only simply optimizing for the content supplier fairness, we may lose the consumer satisfaction. So how do we balance between um, the satisfaction and fairness in such a case? So there are all kinds of problems with associated with bias. Um, a brief summary, like it can lead to unfair distribution of the opportunities and resources. It has competitive effect on the users because users rely on search results for credibility judgment, selection making, belief and attitude shaping of information, and preference, and even decision making in political voting. So how do we address the bias or eliminate the bias in such cases? Um, traditionally, this has been viewed as an optimization problem, where we can uh, have three types of optimization policies. So the first type is that we simply optimize for the utility, or like for example, the relevance, user satisfaction, click rate, while subjecting to some fairness constraints. And the second type is that we optimize for the uh, fairness while subjecting to the utility constraints. Say we want the minimum recall to be 0.7, and we we'll just um, try to maximize um, the fairness constraints. And the third type is simply jointly optimize for both fairness and, and utility. So given so many choices and policies and different algorithms available, which policy should we choose? Which algorithm is suitable for our scenario? Um, let's look at a comparison of the different policies. So this is a um, density plot where the dots indicate all the solution um, points or the solution space. 
And the gray shaded area is the exploration space of the optimization policy, which is essentially what solutions can you find in this data set. So um, the first plot, the plot A, is we optimize for the fairness with some relevance constraints, um, which is minimum 0.8. So the x-axis is the relevance, and the y-axis is the entropy denoting fairness. So basically, we can see that because of the different um, exploration space, we're getting different solutions. So um, here we see that algorithm performance is really dependent on the solution space or the data set. Um, look at the plot here, where the blue area is the solution space. And we can see there's actually a Pareto optimal surface where we can find the maximum entry or maximum fairness or the maximum relevance we can get. And the real optimal surface is a surface where we can no longer push or improve any single metric without sacrificing any other metrics. So uh, the question becomes, can we estimate the solution space given any data set? If we're able to identify the solution space, the blue area, we are able to answer uh, all kinds of questions. So the challenge, so uh, motivated by this, we define the problem as such. Given a data set of n items, and each item is associated with k properties, so assuming the properties of values are independently identically drawn from the distribution, um, and we define some function on each dimension, trying to summarize the, the property values on each dimension. So imagine that a solution set, S of i, is a set of s items returned by the system regarding a user query. Uh, and the solution space is simply all the subsets of such, such solution sets. So define the range of i, which is on dimension i, as the minimum um, possible summarization function values and the maximum summarization function values. And our goal is to estimate the range or the region um, of, of all dimensions. So for easier illustration, let's use an example where we consider the data is of two dimensions. And the first dimension is the relevance, the second dimension is the fairness um, properties. So for example, in search results, we have the first dimension as the relevance, and the second dimension can be subtopic, uh, membership, like where there's a popular topic, uh, majority topic, negative or positive. And the, in the music recommendation case, the first one can be dwelling time, the second one can be like the popular, whether it's a popular artist or not. So um, consider it's a binary value, and we have the summarization function on the first dimension as the average balance, and we use the entropy in the second dimension to de denote, denote, the, denote the fairness. So the challenge lies in that it's impossible to compute the exact boundary, because this is essentially requiring us to enumerate unchooses as all the possible uh, combinations of the data set. So uh, because this is computationally, um, co um, uh, computationally hard to, uh, to um, implement or even to estimate, um, so this is a big challenge. But what we can do here is that we can actually estimate the lower and upper bounds of the regions with high probability by proper sampling from the solution space. And according to Shep-Shep inequality and central limit theorem, or estimate with T distribution, we are able to estimate the boundaries with high probability. So um, the technical results can be found uh, in our paper. And here I'm just going to this, uh, describe some uh, results from the paper and their implications. So if you look at the density plots here, um, the, the dots are the density plot of random samples from the solution uh, set. And the dashed lines are the estimated boundaries. So we can see that the solutions actually lie in the estimated boundaries quite well. And uh, again, the x-axis is the relevance and the y-axis is the entropy. And the higher the entropy, the higher the relevance. So this is a data set uh, generated using synthetic data set where um, there are 100 items and the solution set is considered taking 30 items from the set. So this is corresponding, for example, where uh, we have 1,000, uh, 100 music and we want to recommend 30 music to uh, the users. So uh, the data has two dimensional parameters. Um, the first one is the probability of an item being relevant. The second is the probability of an item being from the protected group. It can be like from male or, male or female, it can be a popular artist or not. Um, so as we can see that we are able to estimate the solutions, the, the boundaries quite well. And we can now do several analysis. 
So here are just some examples of um, how do we perform the analysis, analysis and fairness optimization problems. So we can ask the question, what is the effect of introducing fairness into the system? What is the trade-off between fairness and balance? As we can see from the plots above, the two plots above, we can see that as relevance increases, as we're approaching the relevance towards one, we actually observe the entropy or the fairness is actually decreasing. So according to the Pareto optimal surface, uh, we, we're not able to achieve the optimal relevance and entropy at the same time. But if we look at the two data sets below, we can see that we are able to achieve optimal relevance and fairness at the same time. So what about the uh, expiration space? Of all the optimization policies, which policy should we choose? Um, consider the, the two data sets here. The, on the first data set, if we're adopting the policy where uh, we want to optimize for the relevance subject to the minimum entropy to be 0.8, we may not be able to find any solutions available in the data set. This is, um, so um, this, in this case, we may better go for the case where we're subject to um, the relevance constraint and we optimize for the entropy. Or we can jointly optimize for both, and maybe we're able to find some good solutions. Uh, however, on the second data set, if we adopt the same optimization policy, we are able to, uh, to achieve some solution sets which are optimal in both relevance and fairness. So, um, for all kinds of analysis, we also, also want to draw some implications from using this uh, framework by asking what are the implications of the solution space? What does it mean if we cannot achieve the optimal fairness on the given data set? So this has some implications, meaning that maybe there's bias in the data collection, in the pre-processing, and the indexing, searching, ranking, personalization, and every possible component in the entire search system. So we must pay attention to the minority groups at every single step, and we must address bias in every single step. Um, and we have to also understand the limitations uh, given by the data set. No matter which framework we use, no matter what algorithm we use, this is how fair we can achieve, and this is how relevant we can get. So a brief summary is that um, so there are trade-offs between fairness and relevance in search results, and, but the trade-offs really depend on the data and the ranking algorithms. So given the motivations, we propose the framework to estimate the impact of data and search space on the solution space. And we also demonstrated how to apply the proposed framework to facilitate analysis on fairness optimization. Um, so any other questions, please feel free to go to the poster or check out the paper. Thank you.